we uh, will uh, study the notion uh, that is close to the notion of correlation. Uh, and uh, to explain the difference, uh, let me show you the following picture. Uh, let me assume that I have two dependencies uh, and one dependence uh, is, um, uh, is shown uh, on this picture uh, using uh, blue dots and uh, another dependence uh, is shown on the same picture but with pink dots. Um, like this. Uh, what can you say about uh, these two, these two uh, relations between our variables in terms of uh, correlation coefficient? What can I say about correlation coefficients uh, in this? Uh, yeah, they both are, are equal to one. Yes, they are both equal or very close to one. Uh, uh, I cannot. Uh, uh, I'm not sure that I can draw a perfect straight line uh, with my uh, pen, but uh, I tried to. So uh, both correlations are equal to one or very close to one. Uh, but uh, we see that mm, there is difference between these two relations. Uh, and the difference is in the slope of this line. Uh, in other term, uh, the, difference can, uh, the difference between these two relations uh, can be stated in terms of uh, the uh, speed of growth or growth rate uh, when I uh, increase x, uh, y uh, is also increases. Uh, but the growth rate uh, for uh, blue dot is less than growth rate uh, for, uh, for pink dot. So the slopes are different. And uh, in a lot of kind of research, we are interested in this slope. We are interested uh, not only in uh, the question like, how good uh, the relation between two variables is approximated by the, the straight line, um, but we are interested in the slope of this straight line. And to answer this question, uh, we have to use uh, another tool, uh, a tool that is called regression. Uh, so, uh, regression is the topic of our today lesson. Are there any questions so far? Everybody agree with what I say? Mm -hmm. Good. So, um, uh, what is regression? Uh, let, me, uh, let me think about some example. For example, we study um, some relation between two variables. For example, we are studying how uh, how children uh, learn to read, uh, learn to read, and we have two variables. One variable is age, and another variable is uh, like reading score. Uh, and uh, we have uh, several children, uh, and uh, for each children, uh, for each child, we know their age and their reading score. This is, these are children of different ages, so we can uh, draw uh, our data set uh, like something like this. Uh, let me put some let me put some numbers. Um, when children start to read usually five years, four years. I think it's five years. And for example, this is five, this is ten, and this is fifteen. And we have some reading score. I don't know uh, how it is measured, but 
uh, it doesn't matter, but it be like, Something like this. Uh, and um, now uh, we can uh, do the following thing. Uh, we are interested uh, in the dependence between the reading score and age. And um, the actual dependence can be um, like anything. Uh, but uh, for simplicity, we are interested in uh, like a simplified version of this relation. Uh, particularly, we are interested um, in some linear relation between the reading score and age. So we believe that uh, there is a, a kind of linear, uh, a linear uh, uh, dependency between the reading score and age. So uh, we have a model. And uh, our model says that uh, there is something like uh, y equals to um, by the way uh, who remember an equation of a straight line of linear relation between two variables kx plus b uh, yes k, k, uh, kx plus b uh, but uh, in statistics we usually use a little bit different notation uh, we usually uh, uh, denote uh, this variable by uh, beta naught, and uh, this variable we denote by beta one. Uh, and so our relation will be y equals to beta naught plus beta one x. And uh, this is our model. So uh, we believe that uh, in some idealistic, uh, idealistic uh, world, uh, reading score, which is uh, y here. So this is y like reading score. Uh, depends on age uh, in using this, uh, using this equation. Uh, so uh, we, uh, we have to um, discuss a little bit of properties of linear relationship. Uh, because we need uh, because we needed to interpret the results of our models. Uh, let me recall. Uh, assume that I have this uh, straight line and uh, I write it uh, in the following way. Uh, so I have a question. Uh, uh, what is uh, beta naught and beta one? Can you deduce uh, beta naught and beta one from this picture? Uh, beta naught uh, equals to negative one. And what about, uh, and what about beta one? It's one, just one. One, uh, any other, uh, any other uh, uh, options? Any other estimates for beta one? Uh, right, so it's not, <laughs> it would be if it would be no, be, be zero, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's two, so, right? Mm -hmm. uh, beta one, uh, beta one is equals to two. Yeah, sorry, uh, uh, sorry is right. Uh, so, uh, so uh, how how can we how can we see it from the graph? Uh, first of all, uh, this uh, beta naught is uh, easy. 
because what is uh, what is beta naught? Uh, if we put uh, if we put uh, zero instead of x, uh, so if we find y of zero, uh, then uh, this is just beta naught plus beta one times zero. This is just beta naught, and uh, we see from the graph. Uh, that uh, the corresponding value is shown uh, just here because this is corresponds to uh, x equals to zero. So this is just uh, this value. I can draw it. Uh, this is beta naught. Uh, and uh, beta one is a little bit more interesting uh, because uh, beta one uh, have a special meaning. It corresponds to the slope of this line. Uh, and uh, this uh, beta one can be found uh, by answering the following question. Um, beta one shows um, the increment of y uh, that corresponds actually not shows but just equal uh, that corresponds to increment of x by one so uh, basically it means uh, the following uh, let me pick any value of x. For example, uh, for example, let me pick this point. And uh, then I will uh, increase x uh, by one. And uh, then I have to increase y uh, by two. So here is one. And uh, I have to increase uh, y by two to stay on the same line. Uh, actually, it is uh, very easy to see this uh, just using an equation because uh, y at point x plus one equals to beta naught plus b to one x plus one it equals to b to naught plus b to one x plus b to one and uh, this is y of x uh, so we see that when i change uh, from x to x plus one uh, the value of y increases exactly by this bit one and it does not depend on uh, where uh, what uh, it, it does not, not depend on the value of x. So I can start from here, increase x by one, I will increase y by two. Uh, I can start here, I increase x by one, I increase y by two, and so on. Uh, if I uh, increase x uh, not by one but by two, it means that uh, I have to increase x by one twice, and it means that I will increase y uh, by four. So uh, this uh, can be easily uh, adjusted uh, when I uh, increase x not by one, but by some other amount. Uh, so this is, uh, this, is, th this is a very important interpretation of these coefficients uh, of uh, beta naught and beta one. And this interpretation is currently on, on this graph. Other, uh, any questions uh, so far? Uh, sorry, cl clarification question. So increment means changing on uh, a graph in, in terms of number, right? Like in in this, in the, how to say, so what does it mean to increment, just to clarify? Uh, uh, I, I, I mean the following. Uh, we, have, uh, we have a relation uh, that allows us to find y uh, when we know x. And uh, you know, we say uh, that uh, if uh, we have this linear relation between uh, y and x, uh, then, uh, for example, if uh, beta one is positive, 
uh, then uh, if I increase x, then y will also be increased. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so I, I say that uh, B1 answers the following question. If I increase x by one, what will be the increment of y? Uh, how, uh, how large becomes y? Or what is the difference between the new y and the previous y? Mm -hmm. uh, I say the answer for this question is exactly equals to this b to one. Mm -hmm. Okay. Just not due to this uh, due to this calculation. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. So, uh, are there any other question? Of course, if uh, b to one is negative, then it means that uh, this increment uh, is actually a negative. So it means that y will decrease when x is increase. But uh, negative increment is just effectively decrement. Okay, other questions? Okay, uh, let me ask you a question. Uh, if y does not depend on x at all, what can you say about b to naught and b to one? If y does not depend on x, if this dependency is just trivial. So if, uh, if y does not depend on x, it means that the corresponding graph is just like um, a horizontal straight line. So uh, whenever, uh, whenever x I take, uh, the value of y will be the same. Uh, and what can you say in this case about uh, b to naught and b to one? So b one is zero mm -hmm. because there is no change if we change x to a single step y will not change so we beta one uh, beta one makes uh, zero mm -hmm. yeah exactly uh, if y does not depend uh, does not depend on x uh, then y just equals to beta naught and uh, beta one is zero this is also an important case. Uh, okay, so uh, everybody, everybody are comfortable with these linear relations, right? If you have any question now, just 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 say it. Okay, so we can continue. Uh, now let us return to this part when we have data. Uh, we have a data and we have a model for this data. Uh, so uh, our usual uh, idea is that we want to fit our model uh, in such a way that it corresponds to data in some, in some good way. Uh, in this case, uh, uh, in the model, uh, we have two parameters. Uh, these are these coefficients. Uh, so basically this model, when I uh, wrote it uh, in this way, this model is just uh, an arbitrary straight line, um, not vertical, but, um, but arbitrary except, uh, except, uh, except of that. And uh, a particular line is chosen by choosing of these two values, these two numbers. Uh, so uh, our idea is the following. We have the data and we want to find uh, these numbers, b to naught and b to one, uh, such that uh, this model uh, corresponds to our data in the best possible way. Uh, let me copy this part. So, uh, 
so basically uh, uh, the graph of uh, our model our model dependencies some straight line uh, let me draw several straight lines and let us choose uh, which one uh, do you prefer uh, this is the first straight line uh, this is the second straight line and this is the third straight line let me enumerate them in some way uh, this is first this is second and this is third uh, which line is the best of these three which line uh, is best fit number three uh, why number three how do you how 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 do you find it it crosses the how to say if we compare the number of dots which are crossed by lines uh this line crosses the most of the, the how to say the most big uh, the, mm. the, the largest number mm, i see uh, i see your idea so you you want to cross a lot of line uh, a, a lot of points but uh let me uh, let me draw another picture in this case Uh, I have these two lines for the corresponding data. Uh, which one will you prefer now? Mm -hmm. Sarah prefers number two. Yeah, I agree with Sarah's suggestions about the... Yes, but, uh, but, but your criteria... The similar numbers but your criteria your criteria doesn't meet uh, because here number one uh, line number one uh, intersects uh, uh, a lot of points here 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 uh, but uh, mm -hmm. line number two does not intersect any of these points but you prefer number two um, why what is the criterion we use so uh, we feel that uh, in this picture, in, in my second picture, uh, line number two is better than line number one. Everybody agree with that? Uh, it is more central. It is uh, it uh, it describes our data better. Yeah, in a sense. Uh, so we have some intuition. Uh, and now let me let me introduce some um, formalization of this intuition. Uh, actually, the idea is uh, the following. Let me draw a new picture. Oops. Uh, I have some data and I have my straight line, uh, which is obtained by my model. Uh, then uh, if I fix parameters of this model, uh, so if I fix beta 1 and beta, uh, and beta naught, uh, then I can find uh, the following values, which are called residuals. And uh, these values are 
found by the following way. Uh, I get every point here, for example, this point um, x1, y1. And uh, then I find the following distance between my point and uh, this line. This distance is calculated in a sense vertically. So uh, what, uh, what this distance is, uh, how can I write this distance using formula? Uh, actually, I can uh, do it in the following way. Uh, the coordinates um, of this point, this point is a kind of prediction of my model. And uh, it is calculated using this formula uh, when I uh, put x1 here. Okay, let us uh, rename this point. Uh, this is not uh, x1, but x3, y3. This is not important, uh, what is the number of this point. Uh, and um, then, this is just y of x3. So this is just, this point is a point with coordinates x3, y of x3, and uh, y of x3 is beta naught plus beta one times x3. And uh, this difference uh, is just uh, the difference between y coordinates. So this is just y3 minus beta naught plus beta one times x3. So uh, this thing is called a residual. residual for point number three. Uh, of course, I can find these residuals for every point in my data set. So I find this distance, this distance, this, 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 and this. And uh, then uh, what I want to do is to minimize uh, these residuals. But unfortunately, um, we have many residuals and we cannot minimize them all simultaneously. I can put uh, some particular point and I can minimize the residual that corresponds to this point just by considering uh, a straight line that passes through this point. This is not a problem. But uh, I have a lot of points and I cannot minimize uh, the residuals of all of these points. If I minimize residual for one point, I will increase residual for another point. So I want to minimize uh, some kind of, um, some number that corresponds to, in a sense, average residual, average value of residual. Uh, so uh, the first idea is to find the following thing. We can find uh, a sum for all residuals. Uh, so we can find this sum. This is residual. Okay, let me denote this. Uh, let me denote this uh, residual as, for example, R, R3. And uh, then I can find R1 plus R2 plus and so on plus Rn, where n is number of points. Um, uh, let me assume that uh, I want to minimize this value. Uh, what is the problem? Why I cannot just minimize this sum, sum of residuals.
So uh, why uh, why I cannot why it is not a good idea to minimize the sum of all residuals? Why this idea is bad? Any ideas? Any suggestions? Well, maybe because you can't come to a single model that way, at least in some cases. There mm -hmm. might be multiple ways in which you can have a minimum sum. Why? Uh, well, uh, if you tweak uh, beta 1 for this line uh, just a little bit, uh, uh, make it a bit smaller, then uh, maybe the residuals will stay uh, the same uh, uh, in the sum. Because uh, if you uh, minimize the residual for one point, you increase it for the opposite point. Mm, this, uh, it is in a sense possible, but uh, in this case, we have uh, even more serious problem. Actually, uh, we met with a similar problem when we discussed uh, the notion of variance. Uh, let me recall that uh, variance uh, measure uh, the deviance of, of um, uh, some points from their mean. And, uh, and, that, uh, and when we discussed uh, this variance, uh, we also uh, first tried to um, uh, find just the sum of all differences between mean and um, particular points uh, in our data set. But it was also not uh, a good choice and we finally uh, arrived to a different notion uh, of uh, variance. Uh, we have a very similar thing here. What is bad with these residuals as they, uh, as they are written in this way? What is bad with minimizing of these residuals? Maybe some residuals could be too small to the general um, idea of them. Sorry, if it's not clear. What does it mean too small? Okay, let me say that I can minimize all the residuals uh, to 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 the very large extent. Uh, how can I minimize all the residuals? Just, uh, you can just look at this formula and uh, just uh, say what, what can I do with this beta one and beta uh, zero to 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 minimize uh, this this expression, to 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 make it smaller. Let me uh, let me expand this value. You can choose bit one and bit zero uh, as you wish. Rescale says Sarah and don't. No, uh, no, not sure. Okay, um, I have this. Uh, I have this expression, and uh, let us play uh, in the following game. Your goal is to choose beta not and beta one in such a way that this expression be as small as possible. Um, what can you do? Okay, let me just put some uh, some arbitrary numbers. What can you do with beta naught and beta one to to make this expression as small as possible? Which values of beta naught, for example, would you like to choose to make this uh, expression as little as possible, as small as possible? Mm 
Any ideas? Yes. Uh -huh. uh, so I have one uh, answer privately, but any uh, anybody else? Or uh, in other words, how to decrease the value of this expression? So I have only one answer so far. Uh, I believe that everybody can uh, answer this question. So uh, just give me some guesses. Okay, uh, why? Uh, uh -huh. uh, mm -hmm. So I have a second answer, and this is correct answer. Anybody else? Okay, uh, how uh, how small you can make this number? Uh, can you make this number to be equal to one? or even even less value so uh, I, I have two correct answers so far but this is uh, this is the question that everybody should be able to answer so so I just want uh, everybody to to give me an answer because otherwise I'm not sure that uh, I have uh, I have these answers privately uh, and this is okay. So uh, if I don't have answers for this question, I'm not sure that uh, you understand something uh, something that that uh, that I say. So. Uh, so you can either give me answer to my question or ask ask me any uh, any question you wish about about this this stuff that is written on on the board right now. Okay. So if you get a value equals that equals to one, uh, can you try to make it even smaller? and then even smaller again and then even smaller again Uh, yes, it is a very simple answer, but this is why uh, this is why uh, I want to make sure that everybody understands it.
uh, Stepan, I'm not sure about B21. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. So uh, let me let me explain what uh, what I mean. Uh, if you see uh, this expression, uh, you can see that you can choose this, for example, this B to not uh, to be very large. Uh, then uh, the whole value will be very small because uh, you have this uh, B to not with negative sign. For example, I can take uh, B to naught equals to 1000. Uh, then, uh -huh. uh, yes, Ksenia, uh, that, uh, uh, yes, they can be minimized uh, to one, but uh, I want to say that they can be, that the value of this expression can be minimized further we can decrease it uh, for example uh, for example we can take uh, 2 minus 1000 minus uh, 1000 uh, by 1 and uh, get uh, the value uh, like this one uh, so if 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 they both uh, if the both values of uh, b to naught and b to 1 uh, is very large then uh, the value of this uh, expression is very small it can be it can become negative, and and can become uh, very negative, very small in the sense that it is uh, large by absolute value but negative. So, is it clear? Mm -hmm. Okay, so let us uh, let us return here. Uh, if you yes, uh, uh, exactly. When I said that we minimize uh, this expression, I didn't say that we minimize the absolute value of this uh, expression. We just minimize it as a number. And uh, the problem is that uh, in this expression, I can just uh, increase this uh, beta naught. Uh, to the infinity. Uh, large but negative means small, yes, exactly. Uh, actually, the more negative uh, the more negative number is, the smaller it is. So uh, for example, if I have uh, the value of x here or here, it is lesser than the value of x here. So, the more negative, uh, the more negative, uh, the less. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so, uh, the idea is that actually, if we look at this picture and we look at this formula, we see that these residuals can be either positive, like this one, or negative, like this one. And uh, actually, both of them are bad for me. Uh, positive residuals and negative residuals are equally bad. Uh, so I want not to decrease the residuals themselves, but I want to decrease something that doesn't have negative sign, even, even if this relation is negative. Uh, are there any ideas uh, what can we do with these residuals to kill the negative sign if it presents? Square them. Square them, yeah, that's a good idea. Uh, we can consider this expression, uh, which is called uh, residual sum of squares. or RSS, this thing. 
And uh, then our idea is to minimize this residual sum of squares. Uh, so uh, I want to select such a line. Uh, that minimizes this residual sum of squares. Uh, this is uh, one of the uh, one of possible options how to do it, but uh, this is extremely popular option. So let me just redraw this picture once again to summarize. We have our data. Uh, we have uh, some straight line. Uh, this straight line is defined by defining of values uh, beta naught plus beta one, uh, beta naught and beta one. Uh, so uh, for fixed uh, beta naught and beta one, uh, residual sum of squares is defined. Then we choose such beta naught and beta one. Uh, such that residual sum of squares is as small as possible. Uh, this is uh, this is uh, the idea of the method uh, that is called ordinary least squares. And uh, this is uh, this is one of the most popular method uh, for regressions for finding uh, the different uh, for finding this. Uh, dependency between y and x uh, from the data. Uh, actually, we don't, uh, we don't have to uh, know uh, in details how this uh, problem is solved, this minimization problem. Uh, there is some mathematics uh, there in, but we can uh, more or less uh, ignore it because um, we have computers and uh, we have software packages like R uh, where uh, everything already uh, implemented. And uh, so when we will use R, we just uh, put there some data and um, R will give you information about this beta naught and beta one. Uh, that is uh, found uh, using this this relation, this this um, idea of minimization of residual sum of squares. Um, but for some problem, we can solve them by hand. Uh, let me let me give you a problem, and uh, I want you to uh, to. I want some answers uh, in uh, you can just send uh, some uh, answers uh, in private message for me. For example, I have I have this data. Uh, this is one, two, this is one, two, three. Uh, so what is Uh, better not and better one. So I have only two, only two points, only two observations, and uh, I want to fit this regression model. So I want to find a straight line such that uh, it minimizes the residual of some uh, uh, sum of squares. 
Uh, yes, I have one correct answer, second correct answer. Okay, we have, we have, uh, we have 18, uh, uh, 18 people here, including me. So I want to get uh, 17 correct answers, but I have only two so far. Mm -hmm. The third one, uh, Irina, are you sure about bit or not? Mm. Further, are you sure about bit one? So let me recall that I have an equation like y equals to b to naught plus b to one x. Mm -hmm. Yes, Lisa, correct. Mm -hmm. Yes, Xenia, correct. Uh, if you solve this problem, uh, a good exercise uh, is to solve uh, another problem uh, when we add uh, a new point, uh, for example, here. So if you have uh, a correct answer, mm, yes, uh, further correct. Mm. Beta zero. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, I see. Uh, I see I have some, uh, I have some answers. Uh, mm -hmm. So, uh, if uh, if I have this problem, uh, then I can get uh, a perfect fit. Uh, I can get a line uh, such that uh, such that it uh, gives us zero residual sum of squares. This is the minimal possible value, because residual sum of squares is a, a sum of squares, so it have to be greater than or equal to zero. And uh, if we have only two points, then we can consider a straight line through these points like this one and for this straight line uh, we have a residual sum of squares uh, equals to zero because both of residuals is just zero and uh, for this line uh, we see that uh, beta uh, beta zero is one and uh, beta one is also one because uh, I have an increment of y uh, to be equal to one uh, when I increase x by one. So in this case, uh, beta one equals to one and beta one equals to one. Okay, uh, so uh, this is a simple exercise, uh, but of course in, in real applications we have more data than two, than just two data points. And uh, in this case it is, um, we need some computers or some more uh, complex calculations to find uh, an appropriate straight line. But uh, anyway, uh, I hope, uh, 
everybody understand uh, the idea of this residual sum of squares minimization. Are there any question about this exercise? Okay, uh, then let us, uh, let us return to this example about reading score and let us uh, discuss a little bit, uh, a little bit in the interpretation. Uh, let me assume that I uh, fitted my linear regression model and uh, I get some straight line here. Uh, for example, something like this. This is just an approximation. Let me remove this point to make this approximation better. Uh, so I have uh, I have some kind of equation for this straight line. Uh, okay, uh, I think that uh, we have something like this. So, can you, uh, can anybody tell me uh, what is the equation of this line? What are regression coefficients? So, what about beta naught? Minus 10. Minus 10. Okay. Uh, yes, this is this minus 10. And what about beta 1? Uh, to find beta 1, we have to understand uh, what is the increment of for uh, the value of reading score uh, when we increase h by one uh, i have uh, i have this picture when we when we can uh, increase h by 10 uh, so, sorry not by 10 but by 5 so plus 5 and uh, it leads to increase of reading score by uh, by 20. Uh, so uh, if i increase if i increase uh, x by 5 I increase y by 20. It means that if I increase x by 1, uh, I will increase y uh, by which value? By value 4. Yes, sorry, is correct. So beta 1 is 4. It is 20 over 5. This 20 and this five. Uh, yes, it always can be solved in this way because uh, because you just have uh, you just have uh, the relation that uh, if I increase uh, okay uh, if I increase uh, x by one I uh, I should increase y uh, by uh, beta one. If I increase x by five, I will increase y by beta one uh, five times. Uh, so, uh, so to find uh, beta one, I have to divide this increase by this increase. Okay, uh, so uh, let us discuss uh, these values, uh, this value four and this value negative 10. Uh, let us uh, start with this uh, number four. Or number four. Uh, what is the interpretation uh, 
interpretation of beta one. Uh, uh, how can we say in just 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 in plain English uh, without uh, some fancy mathematical terms? What is the meaning of uh, this uh, of this number four for our for our problem? What is the interpretation for this bit one? It shows the angle. Uh, angle is a too, too fancy mathematical term. Let me assume that you want to explain this to, for example, president of some country. Uh, who doesn't know this angle stuff? How how would you say in this case? Maybe it's like a speed of uh, increasing. Yeah, yeah. We can yes, you can. Actually, actually, just just in plain English, you can say that uh, every year, uh, on average. Uh, children uh, increase their reading score by the value four. So we have uh, one year passed and uh, reading score increased by four. Another year passed, reading score is increased by four and so on. So this is, uh, this is actually the rate of increase, yeah. Uh, I think angle is just too mathematically. So this is, uh, this is a kind of growth rate um, we can interpret bit one in the following term. We can say that reading score uh, is increased uh, by four points every year on average. Of course, we don't we don't say it uh, about a particular student. We do not uh, in in this uh, in this in this problem we do not um, we do not follow some particular students. We just uh, see some some a lot of people, a lot of students, a lot of children, and uh, we just uh, see some some general trend that uh, those, uh, those children uh, whose age is larger uh, has a larger reading score. Uh, and that this, uh, this uh, dependence, again, on average, we see that there are some people who uh, deviate from this dependency in this uh, to uh, here or here, we, we can have positive or negative uh, deviance from this uh, law. But uh, anyway, we see that there is uh, some general trend and this trend uh, is expressed uh, by, by this statement. Okay, everybody agree with this interpretation. Uh, now, mm -hmm. good. Now, how can you interpret B to not? So we have B to not equals to negative 10. How can we interpret it? Like a starting point. Uh, yes, but in terms uh, in terms of our in terms of our initial data or initial the, the real uh, the real world problem uh, yes manuel uh, it is a good it is a good thing mm -hmm. uh, so uh, basically we see that uh, okay if our model is correct then what is b to not if we 
strongly believe in our model that there is uh, some kind of linear relationship of linear growth and this growth can be extended to any part of uh, of the age variable what can i say uh, what can i say about beta naught in this case mm -hmm. Uh, actually, uh, actually, uh, okay. We can uh, we can count uh, we can count this reading score, for example, like number of words per minute. But this is just uh, we just provide some uh, unit of measure of this reading score. Okay, uh, let uh, let us assume that uh, this is number of words per minute. Uh, so, if we really believe in our model. Uh, then uh, this model says us uh, that uh, just a newborn people, that newborn babies, uh, read minus uh, minus ten words per minute. This is this is the interpretation of this beta naught. Of course, uh, it doesn't make any sense uh, because um, because actually we have to understand that our model is just a kind of approximation and uh, this approximation uh, can be incorrect or can make no sense uh, at some values of the parameters. Uh, for example, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't make any sense to extrapolate you know, from our data to extrapolate uh, the results here. Uh, but Technical, uh, technical interpretation uh, is like um, is like newborn uh, newborns read uh, minus ten words uh, per minute. Uh, of course, again, it doesn't make sense. It's just an example uh, that we cannot uh, just use. Uh, our regression models, even if we believe that this is an appropriate model to uh, to um, model our data, we cannot uh, we cannot just uh, uh, extrapolate uh, the results uh, of predictions to out of the scope of our data. Okay, uh, I just uh, I just want to show your picture from XKCD about uh, about this. Uh, yeah. Uh, this one extrapolation of uh, uh, of number of husbands uh, with time. Uh, actually, actually, again, they uh, fitted a linear model, a linear regression using two points, just like we did uh, previously. And uh, they had uh, this, uh, these results. Uh, okay. Uh, so uh, on one hand, uh, these regression things are a very useful tool to study, uh, to study data, to uh, find uh, some, yeah, quantitative estimates uh, for the relations between variables and uh, they are used uh, all over the data science. On the other hand, uh, like any other model, uh, it has some limitations. Um, there can be uh, another, uh, another picture, for example, if we get uh, some more uh, more data for example this is age and this is reading score it is possible that we have some relation like this uh, and uh, if for example we took a uh, larger uh, larger 
extent of this age variable, not just consider uh, children, but consider also adults of all ages. Uh, and uh, in this case, again, uh, it is possible to fit our model. And uh, this model will give you some answer uh, like, like this one. Uh, this model, again, will give your, will give your answer. But uh, of course, we understand that in this case, this linear approximation is, um, um, we, we see that it does not correspond good to our data. Uh, we see that our data shows us that there is no just a linear relationship between variables. We see that uh, this is some kind of uh, more uh, more complex relation. It is not. It is not just a linear, just a fixed uh, fixed growth rate. But uh, we have uh, fast uh, fast growth rate uh, here. Then we have slow growth rate. And then probably uh, we have some decrease as, uh, of reading score. Uh, so not every dependence uh, is um, uh, can be uh, can be considered as a linear dependence. Um, but if you know nothing, then you can use a linear model because it is the simplest possible model that you can imagine, the simplest possible non-trivial model. Uh, and so this is uh, why it is uh, used uh, so, uh, so often. Uh, okay. Are there any questions so far for this, uh, this, this models, these linear regressions. What is the difference between regression and correlation? Okay, yeah, that's a good. Uh, that's a good uh, question, and let me re let me uh, return to the beginning. Uh, you see, at this picture, uh, uh, at, at 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 this picture, as we discussed, uh, we have here two two data sets, and uh, correlations for both data sets is just almost the same. This is very close to one because. In both data sets, uh, we have uh, a perfect, uh, perfect linear fit. But uh, actual uh, lines uh, that uh, correspond to this data are different. They have, di they have different slopes. And uh, this slope is actually our coefficient B to one. B to one shows us uh, how, what is the slope of the line or how vertical or horizontal is this line. Uh, by the way, we have uh, a good question here. Uh, if I fit uh, two regressions, uh, this is uh, y equals to b to naught uh, one plus b to one one x, and this is y equals to b to naught two uh, plus uh, b to naught two x. Uh, what can you say uh, about uh, the Uh, relation between uh, beta one two and beta one one. So uh, between these two coefficients, which one is larger? Beta one two. Beta one two is larger, yeah, uh, because uh, because we see that here uh, the slope is larger than here. Uh, so uh, this this is what is sketched by regression models, the slope. Actually, not only the slope, uh, but the slope is the most important. And this is not catched by uh, correlation coefficient uh, because correlation coefficient just measures how good uh, our data are approximated by the straight line. In this case, uh, they both approximated by the straight line perfectly. So no, no difference in correlation. But regression model says which line uh, is the best line of approximation. 
And the properties of this line uh, can be interpreted in terms of our original model, just like we did it here. So this is, this is the difference. Okay, thank you. Other questions? Okay, I think now we can make a 10 minutes break. Fortunately, we don't have to find uh, a room with computers because we don't have any rooms now. Uh, and uh, after 10 minutes, we will return to the same uh, to the same meeting in Zoom and we will continue uh, with practical part. Uh, so, uh, we'll again use uh, the data set. We probably already, already, already used it. Uh, this is called HSB2. Sorry. Uh, just a second, I will send a link everybody. So. Uh, this is our data. Um, and let us try to, to do some regressions. Um, for example, we are interested in uh, is the relation between uh, some variables here. For example, uh, what is the, what can we say about math and science? Um, we can do some kind of regression model uh, like the following. Um,
uh, so uh, this is uh, uh, this is the result of our regression modeling. So uh, we have uh, we have model now like uh, that uh, science uh, equals to uh, beta naught plus beta one uh, times math. Uh, and uh, we feed this beta naught and beta one and get uh, this formula, uh, these coefficients. Uh, actually, this coefficient uh, is called intercept. Uh, this is uh, the same as this beta naught. And uh, this is coefficient uh, uh, behind, uh, behind math. This is uh, our beta one. Uh, so, uh, here, uh, intercept uh, is the same as beta naught, and math is beta one. Uh, we can draw a picture. Let me just use uh, basic R draw. Uh, basic R plotting techniques. I will just uh, plot uh, this is my scatter plot. And uh, I can draw uh, a line, a straight line that corresponds to these numbers on the same graph. Uh, I probably can do it with curve. Let me try. Yeah. Uh, I have this uh, best fit straight line. And uh, we see that, uh, in fact, uh, it corresponds to our data. Uh, at least to, 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 to some extent. So uh, it is possible that this is uh, an actual relation. At least, uh, at least it is a good approximation uh, to our relation. So uh, can you get the same result? Everybody, uh, everybody uh, have the same result as here. Uh, we can uh, actually get uh, the same picture, but uh, a bit, uh, a bit uh, more nice using digiplot.
So this is scatter plot, and uh, to add uh, this straight line, uh, we can use uh, geom smooth. Okay, uh, we can do it. Okay, jump line. No. Jump smooth. Uh, this is uh, the same straight line as before. Um, I will uh, explain uh, a little bit later uh, the meaning of this shaded region. But now uh, you see that this straight line is more or less the same as uh, on the previous picture. So uh, here we didn't uh, provide uh, any particular numbers like like here uh, because uh, this this function jump smooth uh, uses uh, the same uh, function lm linear model uh, to find uh, this straight line. Okay, uh, now let us discuss a little bit uh, the meaning of these numbers. Okay, let us um, uh, let us try just uh, just to. Make sure that everybody uh, can do it. Uh, let me give you another problem. Uh, just find. Uh, regression coefficients. And to draw. Scatter plot and align for another pair. For example, for read and math. Uh, just try to do it uh, by yourself. I think that this will be quick. So I just want uh, your beta not and beta one. Uh, you can send uh, them in private message for me.
Mm -hmm. Okay, I have first answer. No, I have rather diverse set of answers so far. Um, I don't know the correct answers, but I can say that uh, answers of Anastasia and Tanya are the same. Uh, they are different from answer by Irina and uh, they are different uh, from answer of Fyodor. Uh, Fyodor, uh, how did you get this value of beta one? And what is your beta zero? So I have only four answers um, now. I wait for everybody else. Uh, Irina, could you send me uh, your code, please? Why, uh, how did you get uh, these results? Okay, good idea. Mm -hmm. Yes, sure. Uh, to, to, to plotting, you can do it. Uh, you can do it in two possible ways. Actually, more than two possible ways, but you can do it like this manually. You have to put uh, the corresponding values here and here. You can use uh, the corresponding values from the results of your uh, linear model approximation, or you, you can use ggplot like this. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. So I have only four answers so far, but I want uh, that everybody do uh, this thing. This is this. You have to be rather quick. You just have to use this LM function. LM stands for linear model. And now that you have to use tilde sign here because uh, you, you have this relation between this variable and this variable, and these kind of relations uh, are uh, shown we, using tilde in R. Uh, just
Mm -hmm. uh, yes, uh, I, I have a good question uh, about uh, the relation, um, the order uh, of variables here. Uh, you see that uh, we have these signs uh, as uh, uh, on uh, as the left hand side um, part of this equation and this math as right hand side so basically in this equation we assume that um, we have some dependent variable uh, which uh, corresponds to y variable in uh, our analysis and we have an uh, independent variable uh, which is uh, like an x variable for the variable that corresponds to horizontal axis usually uh, and uh, in R, uh, independent variables uh, are written in the uh, to the left from this tilde, and dependent variable or variables, if we have more than one variable, is written on the uh, right from the tilde. Uh, so we have this relation, and if we uh, swap them, we will get different model. Uh, we will get different relation. Uh, here we we believe that science uh, depends on math that science is dependent variable but if we change them we will get different results mm -hmm. Uh, so uh, I wait. Uh, I wait for another answers. Just, just we have fifteen participants here, including me. So I want to get fourteen answers, and I have only four answers so far. So. So, um, so I want your answers. Okay, are there anybody who hear me but didn't provide an answer?
if you have any questions just let me know just ask these questions by voice uh, in message in private message as you wish um if you have problems with r you can try to use uh, r studio cloud Okay, I think we have to move further. Uh, let me try to, to solve this problem by myself uh, because I still don't know the correct answers. Uh, I only see that some answers are the same, so probably they are correct. Uh, so if I want this model uh, where math is dependent variable and read is independent variable, uh, and then I have math read. Hmm. Okay. Uh, it seems that uh, it seems that the majority was wrong. Uh, so, so if you have, if you have uh, answers like, like this one, uh, that's probably not the result that uh, is correct, because uh, I see that this result is correct for uh, this model. Uh, how did you get this result? Because most most of the answers was like this one. Uh -huh, okay, I see. Uh, so um, let me try it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Irina was right from the very beginning. 
and uh, and and the majority of answers um, was incorrect because um, uh, they uh, they used uh, this formula. Uh, look that here. I specify the formula that uh, I want, and in this formula, math is dependent variable, and uh, read is independent. So this formula uh, corresponds to this uh, formula in R, and these coefficients are correct. Uh, so please, even if I previously said your in private message uh, that these uh, results are correct, I was wrong. Uh, because uh, this these results are correct. Okay. Uh, so in this formula, we have dependent variable on the left hand side. Uh, actually, this is uh, rather important um, because if we swap this, um, if we swap this. Uh, variables, we will have different result. Uh, and uh, this result is different not only in these numbers, uh, but also we will get different straight line. I can, um, let me, let me draw you a picture. Uh, assume that I have the following data. Uh, assume that I have two variables, uh, like um, for example, this is age, and uh, this is like some coefficient. I don't know what kind of coefficient I would like to use. Okay, like IQ. Uh, if we if we look at this picture, okay, let me let me sh draw it in a little bit different way. Uh, assume that I have this data. 
and um, assume that I have a model uh, like IQ equals to beta naught plus beta one times H. Now, let me put some numbers here, like, Something like this. Uh, what can you say about beta naught and beta one in this case? Uh, how do you think? What is the best, the best fitting line? Just without R, just I just want to check your intuition. So what are beta naught and beta one? Just guess, I don't need um, some particularly, uh, particularly precise answers, just try to guess. We can do it using the picture. Mm -hmm. So I believe that all these points just lie on the same straight line. Mm -hmm. um, you see, uh, yes, uh, uh, I see a bunch of answers and most of them are correct. Uh, you see that hmm. uh, you see that uh, in, from this picture, uh, can you say uh, that uh, if we increase age, uh, that IQ is increased or decreased. Uh, we see that there is no uh, such relation. We see that uh, all six data points that we have shows that if we change X, uh, Y uh, is um, more or less the same. Uh, so it means that uh, the best fit line here is just a kind of straight line. And uh, it will be in the middle of uh, these two points, of this point and this point. Uh, so this point is I have to find an average. So this is 120, yeah, uh, as most of you said. Uh, so this is uh, best fit line. Uh, and for this best fit line, we have beta naught equals to uh, 120 and uh, beta one equals to zero. There is no relation between IQ and age, at least according to the uh, synthetic data that I just created. Um, and uh, this actually makes sense. I mean that uh, it is possible that we get uh, this kind of result and we uh, actually this equation makes sense because if we are interested in 
how age uh, changes, uh, sorry, how IQ changes with age, uh, then uh, this, uh, this relation makes, makes sense. Uh, but uh, it is also technically possible uh, to consider another problem, uh, to consider another model. And in this model, we will have age as a function of IQ. Uh, is it possible to consider this model? Um, Fyodor, uh, I don't understand your question, sorry. Можно спросить голосом, можно спросить по-русски. Наверное, я сам понял, что не всем правильный вопрос. Просто меня немножко смущает, поскольку у нас как бы есть две константы, а мы считаем 120 как бета-1, хотя он никогда таким не бывает. Но, наверное, это и в других графиках такая проблема есть, это, наверное, ничего страшного, извините, Ну да, ну да, нет, это, это, это опять же возвращаясь к вот этому примеру. Uh, so the, uh, the question was, uh, the question was that uh, in this in this example, uh, no points of our data set pass through this uh, straight line, but this is actually uh, the same thing as we discussed here. Uh, again, here we discussed that this line number two uh, is preferred over this line number one uh, because, in a sense, it corresponds to 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 the data set uh, itself. Actually, if you if you do this uh, fitting using least squares, uh, you will get exactly a, um, you will get line that uh, lies exactly uh, in the middle of these two lines. Uh, this is just a property of our ordinary least squares method. If you write down the corresponding minimization problem, you will get some parabola. And um, uh, this parabola is minimized exactly in the middle. Actually, it makes sense because uh, if I move this line, for example, here, I will uh, increase uh, difference with these points. And uh, uh, on the other hand, if I move this line here, I will increase difference with this point. Uh, so it is reasonable to, uh, to, to, to draw this line somewhere in between, because actually it minimizes uh, the, corresponding, uh, the corresponding residual, um, uh, residual sum of squares. Okay, uh, so uh, let, us consider, uh, let's, let us consider this model. Uh, we can uh, we can draw uh, a picture that corresponds to this model. Uh, actually, for the same data, I just change uh, my coordinates, my axes. Now we have um, now we have IQ here and age here, and the picture will be like. Like this, it is actually a, a kind of uh, a kind of symmetry. If I draw, if I draw this line, and I do a symmetry against this line, uh, I will get uh, this new graph uh, from this old graph. I just uh, I just switch my variables, uh, and what if I what if I uh, try to find the corresponding relation here. Um, again, I have some numbers. Uh, here are 18, here are So what can you say about beta one, uh, beta zero, and beta one here? Mm. 
beta one equals to 15, uh, sorry, beta zero equals to 15, beta one equals to zero. I have this straight line. Okay, uh, let me just for the sake of the argument, uh, let me change this picture just a little bit. Uh, let me consider, let me consider this kind of data. So now, uh, again, uh, again, I have, I have H here and IQ here, and uh, now I have a, a straight line that increases very slowly, like this one. And uh, if I consider, uh, if I consider here, I consider a model IQ as a function of H. And uh, now I can draw a symmetrical picture if I consider H as a function of IQ. So this is IQ, this is H. And what kind of relation I will get here? Uh, actually, I think that uh, I will get some, uh, again, I will get some line. Uh, I don't know exactly uh, what can I say about its, uh, its uh, slope, uh, but uh, anyway, uh, it will be something like this. Uh, so if I uh, redraw the same line on the first picture, I will get, so if I want the same, the same relation uh, drawn on, uh, on the first picture, I will get, uh, I will get what? I, I have to draw, I have to draw uh, a line uh, that for, okay, let me put some numbers. Uh, let me assume that here value 10, no, uh, no 10, but, for example, 60 and here value like 15 and here 25 and here five. Uh, so I want to draw a point. Like uh, this point, uh, I want to draw it on uh, the top picture, it is a point uh, with it 
this corresponds to the middle. And this point uh, is somewhere here. And uh, I have another point, uh, this one. And this point corresponds to Uh, sorry, uh, this point uh, is this point uh, is somewhere here, and uh, this point is somewhere here. Uh, so if I just move uh, this line uh, to the previous picture, uh, I will get this line. Uh, so uh, you see from this example that uh, if I choose different uh, different model, if I choose different formula, I will get a different relation between two variables as my answer. Uh, you see that uh, this is the difference is very uh, very serious. Uh, if I, if I consider this uh, formula uh, for this data, uh, then um, I see that uh, I have a very small slope here because uh, IQ does not depend on age, uh, mostly does not depend on age. So here is some slope, but it is very small. But if I consider the same data, uh, but uh, with this model, uh, I get, well, qualitatively, it is uh, the same answer. Uh, I will get an answer like that. The dependence uh, between age and IQ is uh, very small, that uh, the corresponding slope is very small here. But if I look at this picture uh, from the point of view of the original picture, if I look at this, at this if I draw uh, this line that corresponds to this dependence here, uh, this uh, dependence will be uh, like that there is very large uh, dependence between uh, a IQ and age that if I increase age slightly then IQ should uh, be increased uh, uh, very fast mm -hmm. uh, further yes it is possible but I don't want to uh, I don't want to write uh, these formulas. Uh, actually, what I want to say is the following. Um, if you have data, you can use any model you wish, technically. You will put it into R, and R will give you some answer. Uh, but uh, not all models are equally useful. If some other is not uh, for example, in this experiment, uh, which one of two models uh, you seem to be reasonable, not mathematically, but from real life perspective, uh, which, uh, which model is, is we, we, can, we can consider in, in real life. This is model number one and this is model number two. The first one, yeah, because we, we basically assume that uh, there is uh, some kind of uh, causal relationship. We assume that IQ can depend on age, that IQ can change uh, when age changes, and there is uh, some kind of uh, some kind of um, maybe causal uh, causal dependency. Um, but if we consider inverse dependence, like how age depends on IQ. If we consider this for a particular person or if we uh, consider it uh, for a group of people, it does not make much sense from, uh, from just a um, real life perspective. But mathematically, uh, these two statements uh, can, be, uh, can be analyzed and you will get, you will get some answers. Yeah, but in in the in, in the research about psychological age again, 
uh, you probably have uh, some variable that is called psychological age that can depends on some other variables that you consider like real age like some other circumstances of uh, one's life but um, but uh, anyway when you write uh, this model you assume uh, you if if you want to interpret this model uh, you naturally assume some some meaningful relation between your variables and so uh, when you uh, plan your research you have to uh, you have to uh, specify which variables will be your dependent variables and which variables will be your independent variables and you have to justify your choice uh, in some way so you have to answer why you think that um, that the relation is in this way but not in the uh, inverse way otherwise you just can get some numbers but they will not be interpretable so this is this is important um, I would say philosophical uh, philosophical issue uh, there is another very important uh, very important issue uh, let us discuss it uh, now uh, for example uh, we just uh, we just uh, used R to find a correlation between like read and math we had some data and um, and we had some result let me um, recall that we have beta zero here uh, 21 and beta one is all dot six so we have uh, we have math equals to 21 plus all dot six times read. Uh, so this is uh, this is the result of our modeling with R. And uh, we can interpret again, we can interpret this uh, all dot six. Uh, we can interpret uh, like the answer to the following question. Um, I can I can say that we can interpret it in the following way. Um, um, this is uh, an increment. Uh, of variable math uh, that corresponds to to increment of read by one. Uh, Yes, uh, yes, sorry, uh, let me let me share a, it again. Something stopped. Ah, yeah, that's fine. Uh, you see you see the picture, yes, exactly. Um, so uh, again, uh, I can say that uh, I can interpret interpret this number o dot six as uh, the following. If I increase reading by one, uh, mathematics should increase by O.6. This is what uh, this straight line and this formula says us. But yeah, now let us uh, let us think a little bit about this interpretation. Uh, let me consider some student, some some um, school child, uh, school child. Uh, who like to read but hate mathematics 
and um, um, we see this picture and the student also see this picture and says okay uh, we see that according to this picture uh, there is correlation between mathematics uh, score and read score and so if i uh, will read uh, a lot i will increase my uh, mathematical score uh, so i don't have to do more mathematics i just uh, i just will uh, read a lot and uh, according to this formula i will increase my mathematical grade mathematical score automatically uh, how do you think uh, is it correct reasoning or not No, why? Uh, they are dependent, uh, they are not dependent, but correlated. Okay. Uh, so So okay, um, to make uh, to make my argument uh, even stronger, uh, let me consider another kind of data. Uh, let me assume that uh, again uh, I study I study school children, and uh, I want to check uh, the relation between some uh, some um, uh, interpolometric parameters uh, like weight uh, like weight and uh, mathematics score and let us assume that uh, we consider people of different ages uh, for example from uh, age of 5 to age of 15 and uh, we have a data like this so uh, we have children of uh, in different ages uh, in our data and uh, again uh, again we do this regression and we'll get some result like math equals to um, something like this uh, does it look plausible uh, this this kind of data uh, okay let me try uh, to share it again okay mm -hmm. so how do you think uh, is it uh, is, does it look to be plausible this uh, this kind of data um, this kind of relation between mathematics and weight mm. why don't you think that it is not plausible uh, I, I I just ask about uh, about the data um, so uh, if there is some kind of standardized test uh, that is the same for all ages um, coincidence is something random but how can you justify uh, justify this data why uh, why can we say that we it's possible to to get data like this okay probably okay yeah uh, usually, uh, usually, if you have the same test for students of different ages, uh, 
probably the older you are, the better you, uh, you are in math, just because you had more training. And also, uh, the older you are, you, you have larger weight just because people grow. Uh, so, uh, it is possible to get this, this picture, right? Uh, but uh, if I uh, apply this model, and if I look, uh, if I look at this, uh, at, uh, at this model, uh, I can say, okay, imagine that, uh, imagine that uh, I'm a child, uh, I'm a child, uh, and uh, I don't like uh, to study, uh, I don't like to do mathematics, but uh, I want to, uh, I want to eat donuts. And uh, I see at this data and I say, okay, look, look at this data. This data says that the more weight I have, uh, the better mathematics uh, grades I will have. Um, but uh, so I have to eat uh, a lot of donuts to increase my weight. And in this way, I will increase my mathematical uh, score automatically. Uh, we see that uh, this uh, this is rather strange re reasoning, but uh, but regressions says us exactly uh, exactly th this or not. Uh, let me draw the following causal diagram. Uh, yes, uh, Sara is correct. There is there is another dependency. So we can draw uh, we can draw some causal causal diagram like uh, that. We have, for example, we have age, and uh, age uh, age acts uh, causally on weight, uh, but also age acts on uh, the training time. How much time we uh, we did mathematical exercises during our life. And this training time uh, acts on mathematical score causally. Uh, so uh, in this case, uh, how can we increase um, from, from, from this picture? Uh, it is possible that uh, we have this kind of relation that is drawn on this picture uh, because we have common reason uh, that increase uh, weight and through this intermediate uh, variable, increase uh, mathematics. But we understand that the only way from this diagram to increase uh, our result in mathematics is to increase our training time, because this is the only direct causal uh, causal variable that we have. Uh, so uh, there is a mantra. Uh, that is used uh, in all uh, statistical courses. That if you have uh, any correlation between two variables, it doesn't prove uh, in any way that you have uh, causal relationships between these variables. It can be a different, uh, a different mechanism why you have this correlation. This is one of the possible examples of uh, this mechanism. And uh, actually, in science, uh, in uh, a lot of um, in a lot of situations, we are actually interested in causal relationship. Unfortunately, most of statistics will not give you answers to questions like this. Uh, sometimes uh, you have some other considerations, and sometimes uh, you can use uh, various tools to test uh, that uh, your correlation is actually cause, uh, uh, corresponds to causal relationship. But to use these tools, anyway, you have to uh, have some knowledge about uh, the real world. Uh, basically, what you need uh, is you need uh, some model that uh, models uh, causal relationships between, uh, between your variables, like this model. Uh, if you have this model, then you can um, uh, find uh, the corresponding uh, relations between variables and causal relations. But before you have this model, you can just find some, some regression coefficients, some correlations, but you cannot 
just interpret them causally. Uh, on the next class, we will discuss uh, one possible way uh, to find uh, to find um, some causal relationship if we have some models. Uh, we will use uh, regressions with different uh, with several variables to do it. But now I just want to stress uh, that. Uh, technically, you can uh, you can uh, put a regression model for any kind of data you wish uh, for any pair of numeric variables, and you will get answer. But uh, how can you interpret this answer is um, is a little bit tricky. Actually, uh, if I uh, get uh, this result, uh, I can uh, give your uh, correct interpretation of this result. Uh, that doesn't involve uh, any causal things. We can interpret uh, interpret this number three. Here, we can interpret this number in the following way. Um, uh, if uh, we get uh, two random students, Uh, with uh, different ages and difference uh, in age. Uh, not age, but weight. Here we have weight as uh, our variable. Uh, with difference in age uh, equals to, to one. Uh, then their difference in math uh, equals to three on average. So uh, this uh, this interpretation is correct. It doesn't involve uh, any kind of causal a relationship it does not uh, involve any words like uh, that um, increase of weight leads to increase of uh, math because it is incorrect here uh, but uh, this interpretation this interpretation is correct and we have to think about our models in these terms and we will discuss on the next classes how to use it uh, to to answer some causal questions sometimes, um, but now uh, I just want to stress that there are um, there are um, some tricky things with interpretation of the numbers that we get. Anyway, regressions are very very useful tool, and we will use them uh, in a lot of uh, a lot of future studies. Uh, so. So it is only the first step in this world. Um, do you have any questions? I will be happy to answer your questions about this stuff. Uh, does the fact that correlation does not imply causation um, mean that uh, we should only uh, do uh, 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 regressions uh, if uh, our theory somehow suggests that the two values might be uh, causing one another? Uh, basically, yes. Yes, actually, actually uh, the choice of your model, uh, like, uh, like here, uh, is uh, something that, uh, that you have to do um, using some domain knowledge, uh, knowledge of some theory uh, about the things that you are studying. Sometimes it is just a common sense. For example, to select from these two models, we just use common sense. We, we understand that IQ can change with age, but it is uh, more or less meaninglessly to ask uh, how age changes with change of IQ. Um, but uh, sometimes, uh, sometimes we need some deep domain knowledge to uh, make a correct model, a model that can be correctly interpreted. 
uh, yes. So the um, the answer, uh, the short answer is yes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, other questions, please. Maybe the question is strange about the same picture. Mm -hmm. uh, so picture two, we have this line, green line, somewhere you know, where between fifteen and something. But when yes. I s look at these six uh, dots, I think I thought from the very beginning that the line should be kind of more like a rock, not like a hill. So uh, ca uh, can you just draw? Uh, it is possible. It is possible here to annotate on my. Yeah. Uh, on my screencast, so no. can you just draw oh. uh, which kind of line uh, you imagined? I don't know how to do that. Uh, you can to put, uh, you, you can, uh, you, you have a button annotate. Uh, just just near mm -hmm. other buttons that control uh, this uh, online meeting. And no, I don't have such a button. Sure. Yeah. You use Zoom application or um, just application? Application. If you have application, then you have to uh, have uh, annotate button. Probably it is hidden somewhere. It is on the third time I use Zoom, so maybe I just can't see it. Okay, где то где шестьдесят? Somewhere where it's sixteen, okay. but you know a line. So, uh, so you, you you thought it is? Yes, like this? I thought it was here. Okay, uh, okay. Um, I think no because. Um, uh, why? Uh, why I think that uh, this line is like I draw? Uh, actually, because okay, uh, we see uh, why it is not. Uh, first of all, why it is not just horizontal? Uh, because uh, we have these points, this point, and this point, and uh, we want to uh, decrease uh, the distance to these point uh, points as well. So uh, this will give us. Uh, a little shift uh, in this direction, but this will be a not very large shift because uh, if we, for example, draw uh, this kind of line, uh, we will have um, okay. If we just we have this uh, purple dots at the IQ eight previous picture, kind of one picture mm -hmm. one. If we just put Another two L along this, you know, line kind of uh, predulted. You have two, 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 and more to more to kind of five below five uh, above the line. And here the same, we will have more, you know, like going mm. up. Sorry, uh, it 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 will be easier if you if you will be able to draw it uh, yeah, uh, at so the share sorry. screen. Okay, okay, sorry. <laughs> Okay, Maybe just, my question is not interesting. Uh, no, no, no. Uh, it is. Uh, it is. Well, it is very good to to be able to. It, it is very good to have some intuition about how this line is constructed. Actually, actually, after this discussion, I'm I'm, I'm not sure that I'm. Well, we can. I'm not sure that uh, this line is exactly like I drawn. It can it can be a little bit more like this but i don't believe in this line uh just because uh just because these differences will yeah, be too thought, large yeah i thought maybe it is because we have squared this yes arc. exactly it, yes. exactly uh these squares uh, they they penalize uh large differences more so it is better to have um more average differences uh, than uh, a fewer but very large differences in, in this in this algorithm. So I believe that this line that I draw more or less more or less correct. Yeah, I just wanted to understand how it's why. Okay, yes, thank you very much indeed. Mm -hmm. Okay, so other questions? Mm -hmm. uh, we, uh, I will uh, I will put uh, the recording of this lecture to YouTube, and I will send you a link.
Okay. So if there are no more questions, I think we can we can finish for today. Thank you. Again, if you have any questions about homework, just let me know and we can we can arrange any any additional consultation. We can meet in Zoom. So just just let me know. Okay. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye.